All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's uh, video. Um, my original plan was to do a follow-up on my deep water structure, bass structure video, and do some on the water how-to stuff, and I actually went out this weekend to do it, but uh, the weather had other plans, and it was a little too windy to, uh, to get the footage I needed. I ended up having to fish uh, shallower water. But um, I figured that would give me a good opportunity to talk a little bit about weather, because that's gonna play a factor in all of our lives here, the all fishing year. And um, no matter where you fish in the ocean, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter some kind of weather. And while the forecasting software reveal has never been better, um, it also uh, lulls us into a sense of complacency because we only really consider the area where we're going and not really the things that might contribute to, uh, to what's gonna happen there. So, um, you know, I, I use the Windy app a lot and uh, it's really handy to, uh, you know, it's on the phone, also on a website, to say, hey, I'm gonna do the, you know, uh, Catalina Island this weekend. I click on Catalina Island. It'll tell me what the weather is gonna be. Is it gonna be raining? Is it gonna be windy? Uh, that type of stuff there. Which direction is the wind gonna be coming? Or you could also uh, stream it live for the coming days. I'll look at this pretty frequently and see what weather changes we have in store. I know that this weekend we got a little bit of rain maybe on Sunday, but um, that basically tells you if it's gonna be nice weather or not, but it really doesn't tell you a whole lot about sea state. And that's something that's kind of fallen by the wayside as, uh, as we've gotten more technologically advanced. So uh, talking about that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go really, what's by today's standard considered pretty old school is using the National Marine Weather Forecast and uh, showing you guys how to use that. So, you know, it starts out by, you just go to Google, if you're in Southern California, type in the National Weather Service Oxnard. And uh, that's gonna give you a link to their uh, site, which will, Los Angeles CA National Weather Service. Now, when you click onto this site here, it shows you an overall map of all of Southern and Central California. It shows this purple here is showing where there's a, uh, small craft advisory, stuff like that. But that's, uh, this allows you to really dial in what you're gonna look at. So <clears throat> by clicking the area you wanna look at, let's say uh, we're gonna look at uh, uh, San Nick, cause that's something we'll be talking about weather-wise this weekend. You look, click on that, it expands to this map. You just click anywhere on that map that you want to. Again, we're gonna be at the west end of San Nicolas Island. <clears throat> and this shows us what the weather's like. And um, as you can see from this report, I don't know how clearly you can see it, it's uh, fairly calm Thursday, Friday, it gets a little windier into the weekend, but more importantly, the swell bumps up dramatically from four feet on <clears throat> Thursday afternoon to over 12 feet on Monday. And <clears throat> while we have some wind over the weekend, it doesn't really account for why that swell is getting so big. So to really understand that, you need to look at a, a much bigger picture, and that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about next here. But um, before I talk too much about um, specifics of it, I wanna give you guys some basics. Um, so we have a swell, and the way they uh, describe swell is the period and the height. So basically the height is how tall it is from the base of the trough to the top of the peak, and the uh, <clears throat> Frequency is how many, it's in seconds, how many seconds it takes for that each peak to come by. Now, just so you understand how that works, the frequency is a lot more important than the wave height. So you could have a 10 foot wave at 15 seconds out of the south, and if you're in open water, you will not even know it's there. But if you have a three or four foot wave at four or five seconds, it's gonna be extremely choppy. So you want the frequency to be as, as big a number as possible. And if the frequency starts to get close to the wave height, it's gonna get really bad. And <clears throat> things that can cause that are uh, wind blowing against the swell direction. But more commonly here in California, it's especially during the summer, it is the uh, um, current. So, when you have current going against waves, so our, our wave pattern comes from the, from the northwest, from the windier areas up north, comes downhill, and then that we hit that, that 
countercurrent during the summer, which pushes uphill, that condenses down these waves. So what would be a, you know, let's say a four foot wave at 10 seconds now becomes a six foot wave at seven or eight seconds, which makes it much rougher. And that's something that Wendy's not gonna tell you about. So those are the things you wanna look at and you're gonna need to make some predictions about when you get out there on your own and just understand that during the summer, if you have a fairly close interval swell, close, you know, it's, it's borderline. Once you get to an area where you get current going against it, uphill current, which is very common during the summer, it's getting a lot rougher. You add into things like that, you know, when we first started running offshore, all those years ago, we'd get to, it'd be nice out, out of Long Beach, all the way to the east end of Catalina. Say we're going to Clemente, you're going to go look for tuna or something. Then you get down right off the end of Catalina, it would just get so rough and stood up and horrible, like, oh my God, I'm not going any further. It's too rough out there. But it's not too rough out there, it's just too rough right there. And if you, it, I've learned now as I've gotten more experience, if you just go another three or four miles, it's going to lay down again. So what happens is that same thumb over the hose thing I talked about is happening on that east end ridge off Catalina, and that's speeding that current up, that shallower water is standing that swell up, getting it closer together, making it rough. And so if you're gonna go out there and you start to get to an area where it starts to get rough unexpectedly, look at your chart. Is there anything, any underwater topography changes that are happening here? Is there a current change or things like that? Because if there is, it may calm down just on the other side of that. And that's usually what you find. You know, you get off the east in a cat, you get four or five miles of bad weather or bad sea conditions, and then it lays back down. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's making these swells happen in the first place. So swells are created by something called, well, wind. <laughs> and um, the distance that wind blows over water is considered the fetch of the wind, which is what creates swells eventually. So you start out with wind, which creates wind ripples, which develops into wind waves, which eventually turns into swells. And you can have a wind event 100 miles away that's strong enough, it will send big swells down here, which like a lot of times during the summer, will suddenly have big swells, in, even though it's not windy at all. The wind that we're having here, while there's active wind here, is only you know, making the wind waves. It's not producing swell here. It may be adding to swell. It's getting bigger as it goes south. But um, yeah, I want to look at the uh, at what's what's happening with that um, on a bigger scale. So you know, I showed you guys San Nicolas Island, and we're used to looking at it on the windy app. You know, normally I'll zoom into the Southern California Bight, but that tells you what's happening here, but doesn't explain what's happening out there. So what I'll do here is I'll zoom out. And you can see San Nicolas Island, I got the little flag here, it's in the bottom right hand corner. And then we have this going all the way up to Oregon basically. And this is showing what is creating not just our wind, but the swells that we encounter, especially during the winter months. So let me get this map in motion here. And um, so you can see it's San Nick here, it's nice, south wind, one knot, nothing you got there, it'd be a great day. Rockfish was open today. And now it's, uh, we're into Friday, still no wind, but what's happening is up north, the uh, weather system is starting to come together, and that weather system is going to eventually start pushing down the coast as opposed to blowing up it. And that's, when we get these uh, atmospheric rivers, the wind goes up the coast instead of down, which is kind of unusual. But here we go, now the, uh, the weather's starting to come into San Francisco, coming down to Point Conception, now it's starting to blow down here. But the, the swell is starting way up here off basically Oregon border. Look how far that wind is blowing over that water to increase that swell. But the swell's not going as fast as the wind, so it takes time to get there. So now by Monday afternoon, it's not that windy at San Nick, but we've got 12 foot swells out here. And that was from all that activity that happened up the line there that came down over hundreds and hundreds of miles. So looking at this, the considerations that we want to make when we're going out in questionable weather, which it's always questionable, even during the summer it can be, is you want to look at the wind prior to your going and not, not just, you know, like, like it was uh, Saturday when I went out, it was calm in the morning, but once I got out there, I realized that the south wind had been blowing all night and we just had horrible choppy seas, which, you know, I just fished around, I knew it was going to be like that way, but you know, that if you don't really look at what's happening yesterday, you're not gonna understand what's happening today. So if you just look and say, oh, it's Saturday, beautiful weather at San Clemente Island, and you don't look at, hey, there's, it's blowing like heck up north, we got summertime, we got uphill current, and then look at the, oh, look at the big swell we've got here. 
understanding that current, understanding that interval will uh, put you in a spot where you're having a really crappy crossing or just not even make it to where you want to go. But uh, yeah, so just use that National Weather Service uh, forecasting tool and get familiar with it. They got a whole, I think they got five or seven days. Um, and relate that to what you're seeing on Windy or other apps like that, and it'll help you make better decisions and you have a better understanding. So the, the three keys to look for are the amount of wind, not just when you're going, but before you went, the swell height, the swell interval, and the, um, or the, or the frequency, and uh, what the current is gonna be doing on the days you're out. And there's not a lot of websites that have good access to current information, but uh, during, the, during the winter, you can usually have no current or downhill current, but anytime you get into summer, you'll have uphill current. And that uphill current may not show up on this forecast because they don't really predict that. And the current flows stronger some days than others. So just understand that current is what it is and understand that if you run over some underwater topography or things like that, that can also have an imp impact on, um, on the sea state. But you know the final thing I'm going to say, especially during these uh, this time of year, if no matter how good the forecast is, if you get out there and it's not what it's forecast to be, don't expect it to fall in line automatically just because the weather band said so. They're wrong all the time, and I would say they've been wrong more since this last El Nino because it really um, messed up a lot of the forecasting models that they've been using. So. They're not as accurate as they used to be. Um, I don't know if you guys remember during that El Nino, but it was almost always wrong. And since then, that new data has kind of screwed up these models, the European model, all these different models these people use. But uh, just always think that way. You know, always expect it to get worse. You know, if you're going to go to Catalina for the day and it's supposed to be calm and it's already blowing out of the west in the morning, I would be pretty sure that if they to blow out of the west, it probably gets stronger. So that's just things to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, all this information is available online as well. I'm not going to just beat, beat it into your heads here in this video, but National Weather Service website, look at Wendy, do some research on how swells interact with wind and current and things like that and water depth, and uh, it's be a lot easier to make good decisions when you get out there fishing. So good luck with you fish this weekend. I'll see you next week.